Hello and welcome to another Ask Nero to Joy video. I have Alessandra here with me today and she was last here a little over a month ago. So this today is her second facial and her skin is looking so much better. We're going to um, insert a couple of old pictures so you can see how her skin was when we very first saw her um, the first time. So as I said, it's her second facial today. Her skin is looking so much better. It's not as angry looking as, it's, as it used to be. It's very clear on the, the cheeks. So we're dealing with uh, very minimal congestion now, a couple of little hormonal spots that I can still see, but, um, but just so much cleaner and so much brighter. So we're going to get started. I'm going to cleanse off her skin and we're using the K cleanser. Now, Alessandra has had her home care regimen that she's been uh, diligently working with at home. And, um, and this is what's got her skin so much better. So your home care regimen is so important it's really important to uh, to make sure that you you're cleansing your skin correctly especially in the evening and as I always say it's 50% of the regimen is your cleansing it sets up that slate for your treatment products that you put on your skin thereafter so it's really really important to make sure that you don't dry out the slate that outer layer of skin now as I say in so many of my videos that if you have a dry outer layer and you tend to be an oily skin or even a combination oily skin, you, your skin, the oil won't get come out if, it's, if you've got that dry layer on top and the oil underneath and it's that dry layer that keeps the oil inside and that bacteria, dead cells and sebum builds up within a pore and it's what makes your pores bigger. So that's why it's really important to keep that outer layer soft and supple. It's equally important if your skin, if you are a drier skin, because on a drier skin, you want to be able to get your treatment products into your skin. And uh, if you have that dry layer again, you're going to find a lot of your treatment products are just going to sit on top and not be absorbed and, and therefore be doing and getting to the levels where it should be getting to and it just won't be doing the job that it says it's supposed to do. So it's really important just to keep that outer layer soft and supple. So I'm using my disposable sponges. These sponges, uh, when you purchase them, they come in a flat disc. And then of course, when you put them in the water, they um, become nice and spongy and larger. So they're really a great soft sponge. My personal preference because I've used so many different types of sponges is the round cellulose sponges and that's what these ones are. They look like this, the little flat discs. Um, I've tried the ones that look like a finger that, um, that when you put them in water they also expand but those ones tend to have a lot of fibres in them and I don't like the, the fibres being, they, they seem very scratchy on the skin. So I do, I, I am particular about my sponges. You want to make sure that your sponges don't have any little scratchy fibres in them. So now what I'm going to do, I've cleansed her skin off and her skin just looks so much better. It's, it's just so much healthier looking. Um, it's so much brighter. She's got just minimal cleaning. We are going to do a very minimal amount of extractions today, but it's just so much brighter which is so nice for us to see. I got asked a question on my, in my comments under my YouTube channel. And this particular question was, um, she said to me that she's using a foaming cleanser, but on the bottle, it says that the foaming cleanser is for all skin types. So therefore, would it be okay for her to use because it says it's for all skin types? And I say this over and over again in every single one of my videos. I am not a foaming cleanser fan, okay? So don't ask me about foaming cleansers. 
I do not believe in foaming cleansers because most people, and I, when I say most, I'm talking 90% of my clientele that come into me as new clients have really surface dry skin. And so when someone says, but you know, on the tube, it says it's for all skin types, it doesn't matter. It's, you know, what is on a bottle, <clears throat> you know, on any tube, on any product, is there's a recommendation there that the company will put on the container. And, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it works like that for everybody. So if you live in a certain climate and if you are a really a true oily skin with no surface dryness and you live in a very humid climate, then maybe you could use a foaming cleanser and maybe your skin's not going to get surface dry. But I can tell you from the 40 years that I've been doing hands-on work that foaming cleansers generally are very drying on the skin. And if you have a dry skin, as I say always, that it just doesn't allow anything to get in, it doesn't allow anything to get out. And it's when you see tiny little wrinkles on the skin that are not really wrinkles, but they're what we call surface dryness. So it creates a flat slate, it creates a, a very, very tiny little wrinkles on the surface of the skin that are not really wrinkles, but they're just wrinkles because the skin's so surface dry and it doesn't allow treatment product to get in, it doesn't allow oil to get out. So either way you look at it, it's just not great. So for the lady that had asked me, um, could she use this foaming cleanser because it, it says on the tube that it is okay for all skin types, then the answer is no, it's not okay for all skin types. So, and in fact, it's probably only okay for 5% of all skin types because most people are surface dry. So it's just not worth it. It's not worth using a foaming cleanser and creating a slate, which is then going to throw your, the rest of your regimen off. So a lot of the time, uh, and, and clients that I work on, once we change their cleanser out, we take them off their foaming cleanser or their soap they're using or anything that's foaming that makes your skin feel tight and squeaky clean afterwards is a problem. So once we take, uh, take people off that type of cleanser, then their skin gets better and it doesn't matter whether their skin is oily, dry or combination oily or combination dry. It just gets better and you'll, you know, it's just a huge, huge difference. So my, you know, my point being, just don't even use a foaming cleanser. There are so many, I would never use a foaming cleanser on my skin and I'm a combination dry skin and I just don't recommend them. It, you know, as I said, of course I live in California and it is drier here. So definitely one doesn't want to be using it here, but in most other places, it's, uh, it's not great um, unless it's, you're super duper oily with no dryness and then, then you can use it and then I'm sure it's wonderful for you. But, um, but please understand because I, I just, I am uh, talking about a little bit more today because I realize that some people don't really understand what I'm saying and the importance of it um, because you're, you're just gonna waste your money and your time with other skincare products if you're using a foaming cleanser. So, so don't do that. We don't want to waste time and we certainly don't want to be wasting money and um, so here we have Alessandra, back to Alessandra. We've done an exfoliant on her skin and just see how much brighter her skin is looking. It's just so much better and so much cleaner. It feels really good. It doesn't feel gritty and um, conge as congested. She has a little bit still, but just, I mean, this is her second facial and her skin is really so, so much better. So we're going to, um, I'm just going to start working in some treatment products. I'm gonna put the healing gel on her now. I always like to use the healing gel after I've done an exfoliant because the exfoliant that I use is a papaya-based exfoliant and it does have a little bit of glycolic in it. And glycolic is one of your alpha hydroxy acid molecules and it does sting a little bit when it's on the skin. So it's just a mild amount, but it's still is a glycolic and it still is a little bit tingly when you use exfoliating mask. So we're just putting a little bit of the healing gel on now. 
and I'm going to work now in the Q flavonoid, which is my famous Q flavonoid that I love to use that is loaded with arnica and vitamin K and a lot of other great flavonoids in there. And we're going to work that into the skin because it just really, uh, it helps with a sensitive skin, it helps uh, heal scarring and it's a really good product. So, okay, so I just washed my hands. I just wanted to get that exfoliating mask off my hands. And this now is a Q flavonoid. So we've done the exfoliant, we, and we've put a little bit of healing gel on her skin, and now I've got my Q flavonoid. I am, um, I like the Q, so I use a fair amount. Of course, this is not how much you use at home when you're using it. And, uh, and in your case, when you're using it at home, it doesn't, you don't wash it off, it stays on the skin. I, because of the different things that I'm going to be doing in treatment, I work it into the skin and then I, I take it off because then I'm doing other things that I need to be doing, um, you know, other products that I need to be putting into her skin. So I'm putting things on and taking them off constantly, but everything that I do on her skin has a purpose. So if you asked me, well, why would you be using the Q flavonoid on Alessandra? As I said a little moment ago, I would be using it on her because number one, it feeds the skin. And most people, their skin is starving in nutrients, which is why their skin doesn't heal quickly. So if you are someone who gets pimples and you, you are left with a mark from your pimple, for a couple of weeks, then your skin is lacking nutrients. Because when your skin's really healthy, it heals really quickly. So it's really important to be constantly feeding the skin and keeping the skin really healthy. So we're using the Q flavonoid for that. And as I said, you know, everything that I do on someone's skin, every treat, every procedure I do, there is a reason for it and it has a purpose. So when you're doing your facials, you know, ask yourself that, like, you know, like what, rather than just having steps to do, you know, every step question it and just say, okay, well, in this step, I'm going to be working in treatment products, but you're not just going to grab a, a massage cream and just massage the skin. You've got to prep the skin and put treatment products on the skin first before you then start your massage because as I said everything has a purpose so we so the reason we've got this on here we want her skin to heal quickly we want to hydrate it and and just really feed it a lot of nutrients so that her skin does heal quickly so that's the purpose of the Q flavonoid and what I am going to do most people tend to be a little bit dark around the eye area and the skin around the eye area is really sensitive. So it's a thinner skin, we do not have as many layers around the eye area, it's a very thin skin and you rarely have um, the sebaceous activity. You can get it if you're quite oily up here either side of the nose but you don't have oil glands around the other part of the eye. So you want to make sure that um, you, you know, you can, there's certain things that you can use around the eye area and of course that's an eye cream or an eye gel. Some eye creams and eye gels you can't put on the lids. You can only put them underneath, especially if they have retinol in them. You have to be very careful. So I'm not someone who likes retinol in a lot of eye products. Um, there are some that where it is okay, but there are also some where it's just too strong. So I'm not, um, you know, if I was layering it, like if I'm putting the Q flavonoid as I am on Al Alessandra around her eyes now, it, um, I, I could possibly use something that had a little bit of retinol, but generally speaking, I don't like to use retinols around the eye too much because as you know, retinols are, um, you know, they do thin the skin back a little bit and they make the skin photosensitive. And you want to make sure, you know, wherever you're putting retinols um, in the PM, that in the AM you're also using a sunscreen to protect that area where you're using the retinol in the evening. And a lot of the time around the eye area, you can't use sunscreens around the eyes because they burn the eyes. So, you know, it really stings the eye area. So, so just keep that in mind when you're choosing your eye product, that it's not something that's going to make the skin too sensitive. Now, I like to use the flavonoid around the eyes because it really helps support capillaries. And once again, what I'm doing is everything I'm doing has a purpose. And the eye area is a thinner, a thinner skin. It often gets dark around the eye area, which is why concealer is so fabulous. 
um, to, to cover that up. But at the same time, wherever you can treat dark circles and help support blood vessels, that's what you want to be doing. So it's really good to just, you know, be constantly supporting every part of the face because we want to we want to be able to make everything perfect, right? As as you know, as optimal as we can get. Um, so we want to really feed and nurture it and um, and our Sandra skin is looking really good. <laughs> So, okay, so we've got the Q flavonoid on there now. I'm going to work in a little bit of healing gel and a little bit of my massage cream. And I'm just going to do a light little massage on her, not for too long. I'm then going to um, use a little steam and, uh, and then do some extractions on her. So what I have here is a little bit of healing gel and a little bit of my massage cream. And I'm just going to very lightly do a little massage on her. When you soften the skin, it, it helps with extractions. So I like to do my massage first. It's, um, it's how I was taught 40 years ago in Australia. I know that uh, in some schools they teach you to do uh, the extractions first and then do the massage. But I would say that if that be the case, then I would be concerned about once you've cleaned the pores out and you've opened up the skin, that you're then putting um, massage cream on. So if, you're, if you are doing it that way, I would imagine if I had to do it that way, I would be using a treatment cream that I would make sure is something that's going to help the skin in, help to close the pores a little bit, or um, just something that's going to really help because their skin is going to be open and you want things that are going to just be supporting the fact that their, their skin has been cleaned, it's been extracted, it might be a little bit weepy because you might have extracted something that's a little weepy. So you don't want to, want to be spreading it around too much, you know. So again, you just have to think about everything and all your steps so that everything, as I said, has a purpose and that's what's really important. So I do my massage first, and uh, that's the only way I do it, really. But um, it's rare that I'll do a little bit of something. Um, rare I'll do something the other way around. It's just uh, unless, you know, the skin sort of calls for that. Otherwise, I'm, my steps are pretty much the same. The product is not the same, but the steps is what uh, is the same. So I've just worked this into her skin for a minute. And now I'm going to take some warm towels and I'm going to take it off Alessandra's skin. And um, so I've worked this into Alessandra's skin for a minute. I've used a very small amount of steam on her skin. And we are then going to just take this off with the warm towels. And then I'm going to do some extractions. All righty, warm towels. Now when you're using warm towels, because all towels have a little tag on them, you want to make sure that the tag is not touching the face, you know, it's not irritating it. So just sort of another thing to be conscious of is just to make sure that your tags on your towels are away from the face and it's not scratching the face in any way because some of the tags are quite scratchy. So little things to be conscious of when you're working on your clients. Okay, so we're looking at Alessandra's skin here now and I'm going to do some extractions. We're starting on her forehead. You can see she's got some, you know, blackheads here that need to come out. It's, it's really not too bad from where we were the first time, but she's got some quite dear little blackheads right here. Skin is peeling a little bit. really large one it took some effort getting out that one now the importance of extractions is we want to make sure that you 
you keep the skin clean because if you're not cleaning the skin and you're not extracting the skin then the pores are going to get larger. You've got to keep the skin really clean and the pores clean because uh, once you start trying to shrink pores with doing an AHA afterwards you, um, you won't be able to shrink it if it's not clean. So you really need to make sure that the skin is clean. Let's make sure that's all out of that one there. Okay, so we're going to move on over here. And see how this one here, there's a scar. There's a little mark right there, a fresh scar. But because there's still infection in it, that's why it's going to leave a mark. So once you get all the infection out, then the, the mark will heal better. But whenever there's... Um, Whenever there's infection in something still, it's not going to heal properly. So see it's coming out there now. And that's once you get that out, then it's going to heal much quicker. That's why sometimes people have marks on their face for a really long time because there's still infection inside. So at least if you're going to go for it, you should try and really get it out. Um, of course, without uh, brutally damaging the skin too much here, but but anyway, so there now that's out. Now that that mark there will go away. But you see, if we didn't take that out, she would have that mark there for probably a couple of months. It would stay there a long time. So she's still got quite a bit of congestion just in this high cheek area here. So it's really important to make sure when you're, you're using your blush if you're using makeup to make sure that your makeup is not comedogenic and uh, some of these areas here are really we'll see how a lot of the time there's a lot of extractions needed often in the hairline. People, uh, it's, it's really important when you're cleansing your face to make sure that you're cleaning the skin out here in the hairline. You're using your cleanser really well, you're using whatever treatment products that you need to use, but it's really important to make sure that you're, you're cleansing out there by the hairline, up here by the ear, by the temple.
This upper here under the eye area is a very common area where the, um, the where blackheads are right up here high underneath her eyelashes. So it's 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 a very sensitive area. So when you are extracting it, it's it's more painful, you know, there and sort of also around the jawline. But um, but all these little blackheads up here, see how it is painful. But if you don't get them out. Um, then you can't shrink those pores and you want to be able to get them out. So it's a very sensitive area in here, but it's an important area not to neglect. This one here is a large nodule. It's got a lot of deep infection inside it, but it's not ready to come out. It's got a crusty bit on top, a dry bit on top, um, dry piece of skin. So, it, but you can see there's a lot of infection in there. Okay, we're going to turn Alessandra's skin over the other way now. Now, when you go to work on the other side, in the very beginning, you'll find that it's more painful because the skin, it starts to get a little numb when you work on one side. So then when you go to the second side to start extracting, it's going to be more painful for your client uh, in the very beginning because as I said, the first side, it sort of gets a little bit numb and it's not as painful after a while. But, um, but it's good to do a good cleaning to get it all done because once you do a good cleaning, then it's the, their skin will heal faster. If you're just doing a few extractions, the other few that you haven't done, that you've left, are going to be there for next time. So I try to clean the skin as much as I can uh, so that we can get their skin as, as good as possible, you know, as quickly as possible. And these ones here are often very, very painful too around the jaw area. Again, she has blackheads up here and on the side of the hairline. That's why it's really important to check to make sure that you're getting the blackheads everywhere. That you're getting them out. And then once I go over the face and get everything out, I then like to go back over it again and just make sure and just see that I can't see that I've left anything inside because if there's anything inside, then it's not going to heal. And we don't want that. We want the skin to heal quickly and, and heal correctly where there's nothing left, no little mark as a result. Now sometimes with some of these pimples, like this one has, they have a, it has a couple of entrances, meaning there's, it's more than one in one area. So, and that's what this one here is. There's, um, there's a couple of entrances and uh, that's why it was sort of coming out a little bit on both sides there. So I'm going to move on up under, near the nose, under the eye area, again, that very sensitive area. This is often where there are blackheads that are quite large. And as I said, you can't shrink a pore unless you get that out. The bacteria, dead cells and sebum, and that's what a blackhead is made up of. And I'm so sorry, Alessandra. She's been a trooper.
Yeah, I'm going to put some eye pads on Alessandra when I go down to do the chin, but when you're working around the eyes, it's really hard to have um, the little goggles on because they keep falling off and and I want to make sure I don't want to leave that area because it's such an important area to make sure it's clean is up there around the eyes so Okay, so what we've done now, I've done the extractions here that I'm going to do today. I am going to go back and just go over everything and make sure that I've got everything out of the ones that I've removed and uh, make sure we've cleaned them out correctly. So I'm just going to go back over Alessandra's skin here now with my Maggie lamp and just make sure that I have everything out. That's that one there that's got a big piece of, we've got a blackhead right there by the side of the mole at that uh, one's out. So I'm just going through. And you can tell when you've left something inside there because it's still a little bulgy or you can see the white color. Um, you can just tell when it, you haven't got it all out because it's still a little, it's a little raised. And again, make sure you check in that hairline. You haven't left any there. This one here is still a little raised. And see that one still had stuff in it because I could see it was still a little bit raised. Okay, move this way. It's so not fun having extractions done, but it's how if I do a really good extraction on my client, on my client's skin, that's how I get their skin to be really good so quickly. You know, so after a few facials, Alessandra's skin is going to be amazing and not ever look like she's really had acne, which is, you know, Julie and Kelly. And, you know, when you see them now and Daniela, I mean, their skin looks really great. So... The skin's so healthy and pretty and uh, it's just so great. So it's really important to, you know, when you do your extractions to make sure that you're doing a really thorough extraction and getting it all out. It's sensitive by the lip as well, so. Just go on right there. So sorry, Alessandra. It's okay. Checking in the hairline here to make sure that I haven't left this little bit in this one right here. Here we go.
still some more just down there that we need to clean out. Okay, so we have done a really good cleaning. Actually, it's just a little bit more in this one here because I can see it. There it is. Okay. So we've done a really good cleaning on Alessandra and you can see that uh, she's pretty spotty. And this is very typical when I finish someone's extractions, um, when we've done a good extraction, this is pretty typical of what their skin looks like. So I, um, I'm going to uh, put some tonic on, I'm gonna put some of the normalizing formula on, and then we're gonna put the mask on right now. So we've extracted Alessandra's skin, and as you can see, she's quite red. We, uh, we did a really good cleaning, so I know at her next treatment, her skin is gonna be great. Because a lot of what she had there right now was stuff that was there the first time, but, um, but often, you know, certain things are not quite ready. So some of these blackheads were quite large, and what she's got underneath there now is really very minimal and very small. So you'll see in her next treatment, which will then be her third facial, you will see that her pore size uh, is, is even better, and she won't have anywhere near the cleaning that she had today. So this is something that's really been a, a good cleaning for her. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on the normalizing formula. And that is an AHA that's designed for oily skin. So it, uh, it's a really good treatment. It's gonna sting when we put it on. She's gonna really feel it burning. But it's an AHA that, uh, that is great for oily skin. So here we go, we're putting it on right now. And she's gonna be on fire for a minute. And we're only gonna leave it on her about three minutes. And then we're gonna take it off with cool water. And what I'll do is I'll ask Alessandra if she can send us a picture of her skin in a week so that you can see how much better her skin looks. So I'm just putting on a clean cotton pad, I'm just putting one more coat on the face. Okay, that's gonna stand for about three minutes. And then we're gonna take it off with cold water and then put a mask on. So while that's on, I had another question that was asked of me. And that was, um, okay, this lady had asked me why it is that I do not talk about other brands and why don't I prescribe other brands and I I know what I use uh, obviously very well because I've used Rejuvi for almost 30 years uh, they're my tools and they're my treatment tools of choice and I use them because I know the results I'm going to get with them I know how they work I, and I I can guarantee my work with that so I don't prescribe other brands, um, but there are so many other great brands out there, but I don't talk about them because I don't really know how they work. It, you know, I can look at ingredients and get an idea, but unless I'm actually feeling and touching things, 
I don't, I don't know about all the other brands, so I can't recommend other brands to you because I, I can't guarantee my work that way. And for me to, you know, when I work with people, my clients, when they come in and I prescribe a regimen for them to use at home, then I know what their skin's going to look like in a week. I know what their skin's going to look like in three weeks and I know what their skin's look, going to look like in a month because that's what I do and that's what I use. So I can't guarantee my work, as I said, if I'm, you know, recommending to you, if you just want to use a couple of the products that I use and then a mixture of other products, I don't know how it's all going to work. So you have to understand that I'm not, uh, you know, I'm, I just know what I do and I know what works because that's what I work with. But um, so that's why I don't recommend other brands because I, I can't because, you know, I, it would not be um, great for you if I said, you know, that you could use a mixture of things and, and who knows how, what the results are going to be like. So I, I do need you to sort of understand that there are a lot of great products out there and I say that, but I don't know if you're mixing different things, I don't know exactly how it's all going to work together. So please understand that um, what I do is what I do. And I do that because that's what works for me and it's what works for my clients. So, and that way I can, you know, I can tell a client exactly what's going to happen after a certain time um, because I know that's go what's going to happen. The same with peels. I know exactly what's going to happen with somebody's skin in that, you know, how long it's going to take them to peel and just their, their, the results they're going to get. So it's just because that's, I've used it for so long. So I do need you to understand that. I can't uh, recommend other brands for that reason, okay? So now I'm gonna take this off and as I'm going to take it off with some cold sponges, cool water. So these are just my disposable sponges and cool water. When you put water over an AHA or you go to take it off, it's going to be a little bit stingy for the client so she's going to be feeling it a little bit more now. Okay, now we're going to put on some healing gel. I can see on Alessandra's chest that she's got some blackheads down there further. So what we're going to do, um, you know, when you start working with a client, you can't do everything at one time because you just don't often have a lot of time. Um, I mean, some, some people you could actually spend four or five hours just extracting, but of course we can't uh, often do that time-wise. So as we start to clean up the face, which is what's going, which is what is happening now, I can start moving down further onto her neck. So the next time we do Alessandra, I'm going to actually remove some of those blackheads and the congestion she has on her on her neck and uh, her decollete, which is not an abundance, but she probably has about uh, 15 or so down there. So we're going to get those next time. Now this is the healing gel. And I'm just putting a little healing gel on before we put the mask on. Feels amazing. The healing gel, yeah, it's so soothing. It's amazing. Okay, and your skin feels so nice and clean smooth. <laughs> so the mask I'm using on Alessandra is the purifying mask. I'm going to leave this on her skin for about eight to ten minutes and then we're taking it off. Her skin underneath has the healing gel so it's quite wet underneath the mask and we're going to, uh, it's going to be really a really good mask for her. Now because I've done quite a lot of extractions I'm going to lay gauze over top of this and in a moment and then I'm going to get some ice and I'm going to ice her skin down. Make sure you get the mask right there where we've taken out those blackheads in the hairline right around the edge. Okay so I have my little ice packs here and I'm just going to soften them a little bit and we're going to ice Alessandra's skin down. She's got gauze on over top of the purifying mask and now we're just going to ice her down. Okay, we're going to leave it on about 10 seconds uh, in each spot and move it around the face. Now 
of the nice things about these ice packs is they're very flexible so you can uh, maneuver them around the face and, and even around the jawline when you've done a lot of extractions around the jaw you can just sort of push it together and then you can really cup the jaw which is so nice. And this feels really nice for our Sandra because the skin's warm. Okay, so we've iced our Sandra down. I'm going to take the gauze off her skin now. Now I added a little bit of cold water. I keep my water and my sponges in my hot cabby because it also has a sterilizer in there. So I, um, I keep my water and sponges in there. So we've taken the mask off and now we're putting some healing gel on Alessandra's skin. Her skin feels really nice and smooth. It's a little pink, but it's uh, not going to stay that way for long. It's from the Normalizing Formula. It is the AHA for oily skin and it has amino acids and urea peroxide. It has, it's just a great, um, has your lactic acid in there. It's a great uh, AHA for oily skin and it leaves the skin red. So it'll be like that for um, probably a couple of hours. hours. And we're just going to put healing. And I'm gonna just put a little tiny bit of the A night gel, which is a retinol over top of this. And then she's gonna go home. Again, it is quite late here. So she'll be going to bed as is tonight. And this one here is a little bit of the A night gel, a little bit of retinol. So I'm going to ask Alessandra to send us uh, some pictures in a week and you'll see how much better her skin looks. And then we're going to have Alessandra back in a month or so and we're really going to see how great Alessandra's skin looks in a month or so. It'll be amazing. So we, uh, she's going to go to sleep as is. It's very, very clean spotty but clean. She's got a couple of days of healing. Her skin's not going to look so great for about uh, two or three days and she can use some mineral makeup to cover. Uh, mineral makeup is so great because it's something that you can use on the skin and you can cover spots and know that it's healing at the same time and it's also it's not comedogenic so you can sweat and work out with it on and know that it's not clogging your pores. And the mineral makeups that I really like, there's a few brands and that is your Color Science, it's Jane Iredell, it's La Bella Donna, um, Bare Minerals is another one, Jane um, Youngblood is another one. Um, there's a infomercial on TV that's called Sheer Cover that is also a true mineral line. You just wanna make sure that you are working with a true mineral line because those ones are really healing. So she's all ready to go, she's done. Um, we will uh, we'll see her back in a month or so. And as I said, we'll ask for some pictures. If she can snap us some pictures, we can post that on the social media, our social media, so you can see how she's doing. And we look, um, we look forward to seeing you again. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank, thank you, Alessandra, for being such a trooper today. And, and uh, it's painful having extractions, so she was a trooper. So thank you for joining us, and we'll see you back again soon. Bye-bye.